Hi guys, I'm Dr. Alex Salunga from The Third Space. The Third Space was initially created as a way to give back to our community as doctors. One way we do this is through our information videos, and you've seen those before. Another is by partnering up with organizations who are already helping our immediate community. One of these is the Cancer Association of Namibia. We partnered up with them to create an audio documentary of cancer survivors to give us a glimpse into their lives and what it's like to actually live with cancer. I hope you enjoy this video. Just state your name for the camera. My name is Bonita Ru. My name is Martha Angolo. I'm Ari Smith. My name is Toini Stefanas. My name is Regina. I'm talking about the sickness for Yvonne. They say that they get cancer for blood. I am now in the beginning of three years in remission. I'm a breast cancer stage three survivor. My story is actually strange. I detected a chameleon lump on my breast. When they saw the x-rays, then they saw, said no, but uh, that is cancer. It's very, very big. That was a shock. It's in my family. It's a genetic disease. My grandmother passed away from breast cancer. My mother had it. My son is seven years old. His name is Blessing. Blessing started having headaches. That was 2017. The headaches got worse. Um, he started trying from headache. So he started becoming blind and he wasn't walking. I was busy teaching a five-year-old to start walking again. When the MRI scan, scan came back, the doctor saw that he had a cancerous brain tumor the back of his head but yeah when he said I have it I was I was I think I, had, I was calm I, I remember I was calm losing my hair was terrible that I think that broke me more than the doctor telling me that I have cancer I had chemotherapy for six months it was hell my nose burned during chemo I cannot I feel it still sometimes it's it's crazy I didn't get any side effect it was really fine for me I must go back to path care to Paramount and I must have another 20 chemotherapies the doctor called me in and told me they can't give him chemo because chemo will make him more sick than he already is bad part of chemo that I'm experiencing now, the backlash, is my teeth are starting to crumble. It's sad. It's scary. It's very, very scary. So after the chemo, I went for mastectomy. They removed my breast completely. So it was not easy, but I accept it. It is really not easy, lady, to see yourself in a mirror with only one breast. The doctor said to me that they will have to remove both my breast, my uterus, ovary, ovaries and cervix. Things started getting extremely real. My life crashed completely, completely. I nearly died. The, the tumor is in, the, in between the brain stem. So unfortunately, this tumor it's like a spider web. It caught onto both sides of the brainstem, so the tumor is unoperable. He said he can't operate on the on, on my boy because he can't touch anything there. It was my son crying every night, every day and night from headache. He he was crying, screaming. I could feel his pain, and he's calling out my name to help him. The thought of knowing that eventually one day it's gonna happen and he's gonna leave us. As a mother hurts me so much. The the family was shocked when they heard that Yvonne was sick is sick cancer. Because in our family there is no one who sick that sickness before. Then people were thinking maybe they will lost Yvonne. Because as people we believe that cancer that if you seek cancer maybe you will not heal. Maybe you will go. The mother just crying every day and night. But people they used to give courage. The family they give them courage to be strong. He stays home and um, the only thing he asks for is just to go to school. I wasn't working when they diagnosed him. A whole year I was just home with him. 
Yeah, I actually lost that job that I had because when I went to the north, I stayed in the hospital for three, four months so that the, the boss had to replace me. So he had to go back to the hospital after every two weeks for blood test and observation to see if the tumor started spreading already with the body. Last year in October, unfortunately he slept into a coma whereby he was in a coma for three days. He was not reacting to anything. The doctors themselves even like gave up. He was not, he was just on uh, the machine to help him breathe. And after that, they took it off. It was like he was gone. But then we were praying every day. I suddenly feel uh, leg pain. It was on my groin, just pain from nowhere. The x-ray results were showing that uh, the cancer, cancer spread to the bones. So it was not a good news to me. I've been through hell and back and here I am now. My marriage almost crashed. My husband focused on taking care of my son, which I do appreciate, but I needed to be taken care of as well. I think my husband, they started living as if I'm not, you know, as if, as if I'm not gonna make it. They, he continued a life like that and, and, and it's hard, but that, is, that helped him deal with me being sick. The scary part is so many people die that were fighting with me. I lost my best friend on the 30th of January, also cancer, and um, it breaks you. You do lose a lot of friends though. That's, that's the hard part. Uh, people don't know how to talk to you. Not only friends, family that step away because they don't know how to deal with it and they rather stay away than to come. But there is hope. You can do it. People need to fight. So we prayed and we prayed like really I was pregnant, but I, 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 I was fasting for my son. I fasted two full days and then eventually he woke up. He recovered so fast, he didn't even look like somebody that was in a coma, but then he was fine. But he plays, he's awake, he doesn't have any pain, and he's there. So basically we thank God for every day that we are with him. And we hope that somehow, somewhere, a miracle will come through and my son will be healed. Now he's fine. He's walking and they do anything he wants. What I choose is always positive and hope. I know it will be clean. I know I don't have cancer. That is my belief. And I'm healed. Kima went well. As you can see, my hair is growing back nicely. <laughs> and like I said, I'm in the beginning of three years in remission, two years to go. Still extremely stressful every time you go for tests. You never know what to expect. Although they removed everything now from me, but what if? You have to accept it first. Then you have to be open. Open your heart to anyone who wants to assist you. The main thing that kept me going is I have an extremely positive personality. Uh, the support has been there. My mother has been there for us and my siblings and the doctors. We have a good medical aid. I have a husband that support me. And I've got five beautiful uh, grandchildren. I have uh, several friends, male friends that all cut their hair off. They were all bald with me. I walked bald during the whole, my whole treatment. I never wore wigs or hats. I just faced it and this is it. It's me, I'm ill and I walk like that. So we're still happily married. <laughs> That's the good thing, yeah. <laughs> and he's supporting me now with everything. Cause now we know where we are and he knows I'm a fighter. I'm not gonna go anywhere anyone that's currently fighting this terrible disease you need to believe that you will be okay you need to believe that you can do this 
you need to just believe in yourself. You have to fight, you have to be strong, you have to focus on getting well. That is what helped me. I continued as if nothing is wrong with me. I felt it inside, I never showed it outside. And please join us. I want a lot of volunteers to be at Cancer Association so that we can cover the whole country. I am the strongest person alive. I am the most positive person. I am strong. I am a superhero. If this video touched you in any way or you feel compelled to help out, reach out to the Cancer Association on the Maybe on John Maynard Street or visit their website to find out more about what you can do to help out.